Hi, it's Buck from Bacon Trees. Uh, no, I'm Buck. Uh, yeah, not with that shirt. Let's just get on with the video, okay? Okay, let's get on with it, all right. Anyway, so today we're going to talk about room tone gating and noise removal. Not just uh, talk about it, but I'm going to show you how I do these things. So when I'm recording dialogue, and I'm recording dialogue, my own dialogue right now, as close as I can get the microphone, but out of frame, you can't see it, it's out of frame, it happens to be pointing towards the kitchen where there's some fridge noise. Now, it is, because I'm close to the microphone, it is lower in volume. You can, you can still hear it though. So I'm going to take maybe uh, 20 seconds of that fridge sound or the background sound, the room tone of this particular situation, and not say anything. 20 seconds. Okay, so that's just about 20 seconds. Um, sometimes I would do, like if it's a really noisy situation, I might do 30 seconds to a minute because there might be things happening in the background. I don't know if you heard, but there is some truck, I think it might be a tar truck or something outside, but it's a, quite a distance away, but it's still audible in the background. Fortunately, my microphone is pointing enough away from that to minimize that. Okay, this is a good thing. The fridge just turned off, so listen to the background noise of the fridge not being there. Okay, you heard a creak of the house from the heating, maybe a couple of computer noises in the mix, a um, little bit of more background noise because I think that truck got closer. So there's no perfect situation. We just need to make sure there's a really, really good signal to noise ratio. So I'm going to use this section of the video and I'm going to put together a little movie, which is like probably 10 seconds long as the... Uh, um, to show you how I could edit it, uh, minimize the background noise, either by noise gating or noise removal, if the noise is a problem. Either way actually works. And then putting room tone on the scene, because once you remove noise or you gate out noise, you need to apply some room tone because there's gotta be some sort of air in the background. We live with a tone in the background all the time. We just don't want it to dominate. We want uh, to use the room tone to bridge the gap because my voice with one mic position like this position as opposed to the second position is going to sound different than the second position. So the room tones can shift. The fridge turned off, the fridge turns on. Um, fortunately, it's not a very loud fridge, although it is there in the background noise and it is changing the tone. So you're going to end up with maybe two, three different sounding tones, depending on where you put the microphone in a room and what exactly is going on and what your mic position is. If you get a really good signal to noise ratio and noise gate or noise removal and then adding back room tone works fine. And I'm going to prove it here. So this is, I didn't plan this. I just thought I'm just going to record, you know, um, as raw as I can and take my chance to see what happened. Now, the only difference between my regular YouTube videos and this one is I'm not using automatic gain control. I'm using manual gain control with my audio uh, peaking around maybe minus six or something like that. It's hard to tell with the little meter. It's definitely not distorting, but it's going above 12 and below 12. It's averaging minus 12 dB. Okay, so I'm going to go into the editing now. Hi, it's Buck from Bacon Trees. Uh, no, I'm Buck. Uh, yeah, not with that shirt. Let's just get on with the video, okay? Okay, let's get on with it, all right. Hi, it's Buck from Bacon Trees. Uh, no, I'm Buck. Uh, yeah, not with that shirt. Let's just get on with the video, okay? Okay, let's get on with it, all right. First thing I'm going to do is basically, okay, the first thing I'm going to do is grab this track here where you can hear the background sound where I didn't say anything for a little while. Compare that with the background sound with no fridge. There are different room tones. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is grab the clip right here and open it into Audacity. Open copy into audio editor, just a copy. That's all I need. And I'm going to do noise removal because there's a noisy fridge. Okay, here's my copy in Audacity. 
I'm going to go up to the effect. First of all, I'm going to select an area with just noise. The longer the better. So I've selected like 10 seconds of background sound, maybe even more, where I'm not saying anything. And it's pretty steady. If there's any fluctuations, I gotta select the area where there's no fluctuations or very little fluctuations. We have to have a steady room tone. So I'm gonna take this, highlight that area, go into my effects. I'm gonna grab noise removal get noise profile okay once it's got the profile from that little section of only noise I'm gonna double click and highlight the whole file go back to effect noise removal and then I'm gonna use noise reduction 10 dB let's say I want to make that that's a default setting so 10 decibels of noise reduction is significant, but maybe I want 15 dB of noise reduction. Sensitivity, I'm gonna leave that as default position. And default position, I'll leave the other stuff at as default as well. And now it's going to remove the noise for, from the entire clip. Now, we'll play that back. Very little noise. Now I can effectively use a noise gate before the noise gate would be harder to use. So I got rid of that. File, export selected audio. I'm going to go for wave file because I want the wave file. It's the higher quality. I'm gonna select my folder, which was dialogue, sound design, noise removal, take two. I'm gonna replace it because I actually just saved it and I'm gonna save this as a wave file. Now, when I go back to Vegas and I open this up, it is now showing me take two. And if I right click and I go take, it's going to go the original take or take two. Well, I want take two because listen to this. For example, I'm going to put the microphone right by the speaker so you can hear this. Here's the original. Here's noise removal. Original, noise removal. Sure, it's still there, but it's really low in volume. You can see up here. Watch the threshold of noise. When I bring up the master bus, you'll see. Peaked at around just under minus 40. And over here, peaked at under 50 minus 50 decibels so yeah it's about 15 db of noise removal so that's great that's a step i'm going to I'm stop going here. to go into my effects go to noise gate i'm going to select my threshold at minus 55 because that's a couple of decibels away from the lowest portion of the noise and listen hi it's buck from bacon trees uh yeah not with that shirt <laughs> Okay, let's get on with it, all right. Now there's no background sound whatsoever. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other track. So I'm gonna solo it. No, I'm Buck. And look at the background noise. Let's check. Minus 55.7. So grab the whole track, grab my, that's whole track, grab my noise gate, and I'm gonna go minus 53.8 because it's just, just above the noise floor. And now, Nothing. So now I've got noise gates after noise removal on both tracks and I've got a very clean dialogue, but I still need some background sound. Here's how I'm going to create my room tone. So I'm going to split it here and split it here, right click and open in trimmer. And I've got only that open in the trimmer. So I'm going to take this whole section of background sound, right click, select, select audio only. Find my little movie, and by the way, this is the original room tone when the fridge was turned off, because I think that sounds the best. 
drag and drop it under that little movie that I made. Hi, it's Buck from Bacon Trees. Uh, no, I'm Buck. Uh, yeah, not with that shirt. So basically, that's the little short film I did, and that's the processing, and there's a couple more steps I'm going to do, including I'm going to equalize it. So that's the next step, equalization.